All right, so this one is going to be on observations of the Cathayzan domes as seen by Sophia. Um, this is on behalf of my colleague Anicia, which was going to be given by Paul, which is now given by me. So beginning in the 1970s, the, the Cathayzan domes were first noted as anomalous in because they were bright in the UV vis. Uh, they also had a red spectral slope in Earth-based photography. So that made them anomalous and they joined the red spot population. However, when you looked at them with ground-based near-infrared spectroscopy, they didn't appear to be anything any particularly interesting or unremarkable and had highland-like spectra. So it was proposed that these features were formed by uh, our volcanic construct formed from extrusive silicic volcanism. And then when LRO was operating, the diviner radiometer proved that these domes are very silicic, having a Christensen feature peak at sh such short wavelengths that all that could be said about the domes was that their composition is more silicic than anything else on the lunar surface. And these images are just from Paul Lucy's one of his papers showing just how silicic these domes really are. So the domes were also found to sit on the edge of a thorium high, a thorium anomaly by lunar prospector. So this indicates that the domes are a local anomaly embedded into a regional anomaly. So they're not just silicic, but they may be related to the creep. Now, the morphology and the silicic nature led to three different hypotheses for how these domes had formed. It was either large scale liquid immiscibility, basaltic underplating of the crust, extended fractional crystallization of a basaltic or late lunar magma ocean precursor. However, whichever formation process it is, they might it might have been concentrating incompatibles within the sil silicic melt and explain its association with the thorium anomalies. So if the incompatibles are concentrating, then what about water? Well, there wasn't much water found in the creep measurements of rich and evolved rocks, suggesting that the portion of the mantle that produced the creep was decoupled from the mare basalts source. And Shui Li has shown with M cubed data at three microns that the domes have a moderate anomaly of three microns with the highest anomaly being near um, above the domes on the mare. So we were wondering about, okay, well, three microns is showing something. So what about molecular water? Let's take a look at these domes with Sophia. So these observations happen with three different flights. Uh, again, the flight numbers are just so to help identify them. But the thing that's really important is the different times of day that we were able to measure these at. So we, were got, we have observations from 1030, 11, and noon on the lunar surface. So varying temperatures. The red box is just showing where we roughly took observations with Sophia. Oh, sorry. My maps aren't showing for you. Let's see if I can find some good maps. No, not really. All right. So this slide is supposed to show you the abundance maps of molecular water on the surface of the moon. And I'm just going to go to this slide because it gives you the numbers. When, well, hold on. Back one more. Oh. Okay, we're going to use this one. So we, what we found is that the radiance maps showed the domes nicely in the SOFIA maps. When we produce the water maps, we find that the, the domes don't stand out against the, the features around it. They're not very prominent, so they don't have a six micron molecular water anomaly. And when I wanted to look at the abundances of these domes and compare it across the different flights, what I wanted to do was look for internal water to the moon and not adsorbed water. So I took the uh, measurement on top of the dome that's illuminated. So if you're looking at this M cube image and imagining it's Sophia, um, the image that you saw, you would see, or the location that I took the measurement from is on the illuminated portion. And I picked the illuminated portion to try and make sure that if any absorbed water is there, it's potentially gone and migrated away because of the hot lunar temperatures. Okay, so because my maps aren't working, we're gonna jump to the abundance table here and take a look at that. So the abundances we found are really low, especially compared to what I just showed you for Viper. Um, 
the abundances that we found are actually similar to the highland abundances, but they're not anything anomalous. And you, if you were able to see these images, you would see that there's actually negative abundances in these maps. The negative abundances is nothing to worry about for us because we do a ratio between two locations on the moon. Um, what we find with the negative abundances is it indicates that there's more water present at the Mare reference than there is in this region. So this was supposed to compare three microns and six microns, M cube and to Sophia. Um, what we found with SOFIA measurements is that there is no uh, six micron anomaly, but there is an anomaly at three microns. So what that means is, in, is tells us is that these anomalies measured by Schwei and M cube are strictly due to hydroxyl with no molecular water present. Now that is very interesting. This is consistent with the eruptive lavas having not rapidly cooling or not rapidly quenching and having a slow cooling, allowing them to reach an equilibrium. All right, so unfortunately, none of my maps worked, but if you wanna see them, come see me after the session and I can show you, they're really pretty. So in conclusion for this, molecular water is not present at reasonable or exciting quantities at the Gratizen domes. Um, the weak total water anomaly that we are observing in M cube is likely due solely to hydroxyl, which is in co stark contrast to what we saw at Moritz Crater. Um, the absence of water may indicate the slow cooling of the lava, enabling equilibrium, and the upcoming lunar vice mission will allow us to really understand the relationship between the domes and the Apollo samples and provide hydrogen measurements that we can use to further understand water from inside the lunar interior. Thank you.